In this video, we're going over 50 of the most obscure Minecraft facts you've ever heard of. Let's get into it. The Lush Caves is one of the nicest underground biomes you can find in Minecraft. Home of one of my favorite little guys, the Axolotl. Oh, look at his fins. But did you know that it's literally impossible for it to generate under a forest, a savanna, or a desert biome? It just doesn't happen, so don't even bother looking. Check it out. We all love the name Minecraft. You mine, you craft, it's just perfect. But originally, Notch was actually thinking of naming the thing Cave Game, which I don't know, just seems kinda on the nose for me, man. We all know Ghast, right? They're those ugly looking big ghost shooting fireballs at you in the nether. They also have a pretty creepy whale. Oh yeah, that sound unlocks some awful memories. Well, guess what? It turns out that the sound the gas make are recordings of a cat being woken up from a nap. Now, every time I beat up a gas, I think I'm gonna be upsetting a kitty cat. This next one is so sad, guys. I didn't even know, but it turns out if you try to feed your parrot in Minecraft a chocolate chip cookie, it just straight up kills it. Oh, oh, oh my gosh, I did not know this. So this is a funny one. Turns out that in the Java edition of the game, there is a 0.01% chance you might start with your game and it will read Mint's Raft. Dude, talk about a typo. Could you imagine a whole game about minced meat? This next one is crazy. You know how to get to the end, you have to get an end portal and put 12 ender eyes so it activates, right? You'd be incredibly lucky if you were to find an end portal with more than one ender eye already in there. There's a chance you can spawn into a game world where the end portal is already active. Now don't get your hopes up of ever finding one though. An end portal with a complete set of ender eyes is super rare, like one in a trillion rare. That's trillion with a T. I'd show you one, but there's no way I'm checking literally a trillion game worlds. Come on, let's get real here. Next. Dude, this next one might as well be a straight up hack. You know how shulker boxes are portable chests? Well, let's do some math. Each shulker box has a capacity for 27 item stacks and you have 36 slots plus your offhand slot. That means you could have uh, 37 times 27, exactly 999 stacks of items in your inventory. I don't even think there's a PC out there capable of dealing with that, but I'll try it out, <laughs> you know, for science. Oh, well. I think I gotta give it a break. Is that smoke I'm smelling? The Nether Star, as it turns out, is pretty much invulnerable to explosions. Creepers? Nothing. TNT? Like a whole lot of TNT? Nada. And you can't blast it, trust me, I tried. There's just not another loose item that can stand that. And what's more, nether stars and bedrock will never even despawn. Your run of the mill item will despawn in about five minutes as long as the chunk in it is loaded. But nether stars, those will never despawn. It will always be there. So I guess there's nothing to worry about if you get killed and drop one. Just walk over there and it ain't going anywhere. Now that's one sturdy star. Woodland manors are scary structures that get randomly put together by the game along with your game world. On the second and third floors, there's a chance of secret rooms being spawned. Now amongst the secret rooms that can appear is the X room with some stone and random loot, a spider full of cobwebs and a spider spawner and an obsidian room. Nothing out of the ordinary, at least for woodland manors. But what if I told you that that obsidian room are hiding something? If you break the obsidian, you could find a whole diamond block. That's right, not a single diamond, a whole diamond block. That definitely beats a room full of cobwebs if you ask me. So world seeds are codes that tell the game which game world to generate. Each game world you've ever played has a world seed. You could also use words to tell the game what world seed to load. So think about just how many seed worlds there could be. If you take all the possible combinations into account, there's like, what? I can't even read that number, my guy. Is that what, quintillions? It's a lot. Just take my word for it. Breeding some mobs is essential for a good pro Minecraft run. And did you know that if you're trying to breed rabbits and got no carrots, you could totally use dandelions instead? There you go, little friends. All right, check this out. Listen, you hear that? 
nothing. Bet you never noticed, but there's never any music playing in a warped forest biome. Creepy, my dudes. Here's a fun fact. If you ever find yourself surrounded by hoglins, just drop a spawn anchor. They get spooked by those. They also get scared by nether portals. Look at them go. <laughs> Here's a trick. If you ever find yourself starving or something, just stop running. Walking and sneaking won't deplete your hunger meter, so it gives you a chance not to starve. Genius. Did you know that cakes, the best Minecraft dessert, was actually added into the game in 2010 to celebrate that Minecraft won the Best Indie Game of the Year award, and it beat some great competition too. Amnesia, Dark Descent, Super Meat Boy, and Limbo. Man, those were some good games. Kinda scary though. Okay, enough talking. Now I'm gonna eat all these. Check this out. The original texture for the Iron Sword is actually from another one of Notch's older abandoned games. Legend of the Chambered. Man knows how to recycle assets. Nice. Fun fact about the nether. Turns out a bastion can never spawn in the basalt delta. So I guess if you ever need to find a bastion, you now know where not to go, huh? I mean, at least it narrows it down a bit. Oh, man, I hate the nether. You might not believe it from looking at those big chunky boys, but a ghast can be trapped in a minecart. Come here, you big cat sounding ghost, you. I'ma get you, come on, bam. Oh, dude, what even? I mean, I guess cats fit almost in any box and a ghast sounds like a cat. Are ghast, ghost, cats? I don't care if it's real, this is my new head cannon and no one can convince me otherwise. Here's a fun little detail for all you stargazers out there. Before the Java edition beta 1.9 pre-release 4, the sun and the moon used to rise and set on the wrong direction, north and south. That was probably a weird sight. Dumb Mojang, they didn't know the sun rise to the, uh, uh, give me a, give me a sec, hold on. Sun rises to the east, sets to the, West, yeah, I am so smart. Any Minecrafter worth his weight in blocks know that you can't really be going around using a bed either in the nether or the end without getting blown to bits. But it turns out villagers can. Are you seeing this? What does he have that I don't? Many people make their red dye from flowers or squids if you're into being gross. But did you know that you could also make them from beetroots? Just like in real life. Yeah, I might have gotten a bit excited with the red dye here. Here's a pretty underground fact about the inn that I bet you didn't know. The big old obsidian pillars that are all over the islands go under all the way down to Y.0. Dude, that's deep. Pretty useless knowledge if you ask me, but now we have useless knowledge together. If you ever get tired of running around the end and can't find your way back, you should definitely head to the nearest outer island. You see, exit gateways actually randomly spawn there, and it's way easier than finding your way back if you get lost. You know, because almost everything looks the same here. Come on, let's get back home. Now I'm no art expert, but even I think the paintings in Minecraft are pretty neat. And it's no surprise since they're all based on actual paintings made by a guy named Christopher Zetterstrand, a Swedish artist. Real talented dude, huh? Now usually golden pickaxes are not considered to be any good, right? Since they break so fast, it seems like a waste. But if you want to quickly break rare blocks like nylum and netherrack, there's just nothing better. They're also break stone related items faster than any other pickaxe. It breaks them right away. See, they're not that useless. However, they only last 33 uses before you have to make a new one. The channeling enchantment can let you hit mobs with a lightning strike, but you can pretty much use it on a bunch of other stuff, like armor stands and even boats. Talk about thunderstruck. Now people may say it's kind of crazy just bringing lightning down on inanimate objects, but what I do with my free time is up to me, not you. In rods are some of the rarest stuff a player can get their hands on after reaching the end. But did you know you could actually craft some of your own using blaze rods and popped chorus fruits? Look at that. 
I bet you've never even thought of this. If you enter the end in spectator mode and then sneak into the head of one of the Endermen, you actually get to see how they see. The colors are all inverted. So if you go to the end, for example, you'll notice they see the end stone as blue cobblestone. The sky and pillars are white and the mobs have green eyes. Not really doing it for me. Most of you might not remember this, but way back when, before Rotten Flesh was added to the game, whenever you killed a zombie, it would just drop feathers. Bro, like what? How does that make any sense? They're dead, they ain't chickens. Where do the feathers come from? So for an April Fool's joke in Java Edition 2.0, Notch actually introduced a TNT slab called the Etho Slab. Named it after the Minecraft Let's Play YouTube channel, Etho Slab. You craft it like any other slab, but using three TNT, and when you light it, it functions like any other TNT. However, what's special about this block is that it has a 25% chance to spawn a falling anvil above the head of a nearby player. I bet it's perfectly safe or not. You've probably noticed this, but Endermen are actually the only mob you can find in all three realms of Minecraft. And they're a pain in all of them. You guys suck. Why don't you leave me alone? Most people don't even try this. You can do more than just climb vines when they're attached to walls. Because of the way they work, you can actually go full monkey on the vines that are floating and placed on top of nothing. Look at me. If you ever feel like you just don't want to waste time making your own set of armor or are kind of low on gear, just make your way to the nearest Tega village in your game world. There's a pretty good chance there's iron armor in an armor rack somewhere around the village. Don't know why, they just spawn there. There it is. It's mine now, suckers! Minecraft is full of amazing animals, but some are more useful than others. Yeah, I'm looking at you, bats. You're the worst. Oops, I'm getting ahead of myself. Now dolphins are super useful and they can be your best friend when exploring the depths in Minecraft. If you just feed these flipper looking good boys some raw salmon, they'll lead you straight to the nearest shipwreck so you don't got to mess around and waste your breath. Look at all that sunken treasure. Thanks, water dog. Fire can be a useful tool, but a bit of danger in Minecraft. But did you know it has an even deadlier version? Soul Fire might be objectively prettier and not spreading as fast, but it will do twice as much damage to you. So, you know, no walking into the pretty fire, no matter how cool it looks. Take my word for it. Creepers are some of the nastiest, most annoying mobs out there, bro. But you might not know, they used to be even worse. They had a melee attack, and if you tried to fight back, they would explode as soon as they died, like right away. I couldn't even imagine creepers being harder than they are. The next fact is as sweet as it gets. If you build the longest honey block slide you can with 256 blocks, it will take you a whole minute and 14 seconds to go through it. Oh man, now I'm all sticky. Believe it or not, there's four whole paintings that were made but never got into the game. We should go check them out. You can summon them in game by using a command. According to the wiki, they were added for a promotional map for the pocket edition of Minecraft, but that map was never released and the paintings remain unused. Wow, those are pretty cool. We got an earth painting, a fire painting, a water painting, and a wind painting. These are the worst. Bats are the squeakiest little flying rats in Minecraft, and they got to be the most useless too. As in no matter how many of them you take out, they don't drop a single item. Not only that, they don't even drop XP orbs. Why can't you be more like dolphins? Did you know that like with most mobs, you can actually just leash golems and take them home with you? It's true, the government doesn't want you to know, but they're free, just take them home. See, I took like over 70 of them. Did you know that you can actually get llamas to spit and fight each other? It might be a little tricky. First, you gotta hit a llama and then hide behind another one. Once they start spitting at each other, it's a fight to the death. Yuck, man, that's gross. Another fun fact, a stack of coal can keep a furnace lit for over 42 Minecraft days. Now that's fuel efficiency, baby. Believe it or not, during the daytime, as you can see, most drowned will just mind their own business and not attack you if you're on a boat. You can even hassle them a little bit. Just don't overdo it like I did. 
you need some specific blocks placed on a pattern to summon a wither or snow golem. But did you know the direction of that pattern doesn't matter? Just look, I just summoned an upside down wither. How fun is that? Ow, 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 okay, okay, not very fun. These have got to be the cutest mobs around. But baby pandas aren't just pretty to look at. Some of them have a 0.01% chance of dropping a slime ball after sneezing. That's gross. Did you know arrows used to be made of iron instead of flint? Personally, I think flint makes more sense. More aerodynamic, right? You guys think I got enough arrows now? Bet you guys didn't know this, but if you help out one of the axolotls while they're getting attacked by a mob, they'll heal up your mining fatigue. Thanks, little buddy. Did you know that if you ever get poisoned out there by a mob, you can use something easier than an antidote? A honey bottle. Hey, you think this means Winnie the Pooh is like impervious to poison? Did you know there's a 1 in 256 chance of an egg dropping four chickens? Those are some odds. I like it. Let's go. Come on, come on. Dang, this is taking forever. Oh, there we go. Listen up, I got some pickling facts for you. First up, those cute little walking bacon strips that are their babies never grow up. Second is that you can totally open their chest without aggroing them as long as they don't see you. But you shouldn't get too cocky. They can and will hear you break them through walls. Did you know the reason spiders can climb walls is because they're programmed to register wall blocks as ladder blocks? Hey, that gives me an idea. Oh man, no fair. Check this out. If you catch yourself a fish or an axolotl in a bucket and take it to an anvil, you can actually name the little guys. I think I'm gonna name this one Freddo. Yeah, that's right. Thanks for watching this video, and if you liked it, check out this video where I go over 25 hacks that only pros know in Minecraft.